A question has been asked of me a few times, and it is simply how would Rolex, with their modern lineup of pieces, recreate their iconic reference 6538 Big Crown Submariner? It's a great question. Of course, obviously, Rolex would never go so far to bring back an icon of the past, but what they do have is a great selection and a simple enough selection that we can take elements and create what we would like to see. This is all theoretical, but there are a few reasons why we would never see a watch like this introduced by the family, even though it's a great thought exercise and one well worth exploring. What do we know about the reference 6538 Submariner? It's a very important piece in the family, actually, for a few reasons. First, we know this to be the James Bond Submariner. This is the watch that Sean Connery wore all the way through his time as James Bond. But more than that, the big crown offered a lot more usability with this watch. For the first time, we saw that the Submariner received a 200 meter depth rating. The crown, with its added size, made it all the more professional worthy, if we could say that. Divers could now use gloves to unwind the crown. It was much easier to access. And actually, the increased size would make it a bit more rugged, a bit more durable for the most part. Other elements that we saw that was unique to this watch specifically was the red triangle on the bezel and the white second hand. What's crazy is the level of nuance in this line. The 6538 had so many alterations to it, whether it had a smaller crown, whether it didn't offer a red triangle, it had a gilt dial, two lines of text, four lines of text, and one of the most sought after, the real grail 6538, is a reference with a explorer dial. These are extremely hard to find, but also ones that were, we could say, prototypes to this line. These pieces nowadays go for exceptional amounts of money. What made this reference charming and why I think people seem to have so much love for it. Of course, the James Bond name is nice to have tied up with your watch, but it was the scale of the piece. It was this idea of how Rolex at this time was exploring the concept of dress and sports and just what that meant. The whole concept behind the Submariner was for it to fit both sports and dress occasions. It needed to function like a utility, but at the same time wear perfectly well with a suit in more formal situations. It's quite difficult to do. And in order to address this, they were playing around with proportions and size. 37 mil cases, 38 mil cases, scaling it all the way up to 40 mils as we now know it. One of the most charming features about this watch is that it didn't have crown guards. And I think beneath all of that, and what really made this piece so definitive, is that once these models started to receive the bigger, more industrial scaled cases and crown guards, it lost a lot of what made it so charming and such a character of that time. It's almost like this piece is representative of a very specific era of the late 50s and the early 60s. So the question is, how could we now make this watch reappear in the modern lineup? How would Rolex address it? Most who wanted this concept explored referenced the 214-270 Explorer, that dial layout that we know that is so important with this piece, and pair it with a no-date Submariner. Easy enough. The thing is, with the way the modern Submariner looks now, with its squared off case, very thick and aggressive crown guards, it just wouldn't work if we are referring back to those original four digit vintage references. So actually, not only is the Explorer dial important, but the case design of the Explorer would be used as the base plate. The 39 millimeter size is very contemporary, and since it has a very curvaceous oyster styled case, it would suit the formula perfectly. So all that would really need to happen from this point is to transplant elements from the Submariner onto the Explorer. The first part to address is the bezel. Remove all the graduations from the bezel, so from the 60 all the way to the 15, you don't have any marks. Next is to simply move the Submariner crown across to add emphasis to that big crown aesthetic. Maybe add a lollipop second hand to give it more of a vintage flair. And then of course, to add that extra element that really defined the Big Crown Submariner, red highlight on the bezel triangle and on the dial somewhere. In this case, the Submariner receives a line of red text. It's a very simple approach, and this was done for a reason. 
I want to try and keep it as realistic as possible, what we would see if this was ever explored in the family. But what is very interesting, though this is quite a simple exercise, when you pair this watch next to a generic Submariner, you notice just how different they look. They don't share anything that looks the same, which is quite unreal. What blew me away is that the proportions actually makes this watch look quite aggressive for what it is. Even though it doesn't have oversized crown guards or a squared off case, the emphasis of the bezel and the size of the dial gives the watch a lot of presence. We see just how the different dials say something else about the references. And this Explorer-esque element looks very aggressive for the most part too. The added red highlights also adds to that. So then it is questioning just why we haven't seen this and what it would mean if Rolex had to introduce this. There are many layers to answering this question and it's quite an interesting thought experiment. Rolex would never introduce a model like this because it taps into both the Explorer and the Submariner territory. What it would mean then is that it takes attention away from both of those references since you are technically getting a two for one deal with this watch. More than that though, we have to understand that at this point in time, the Submariner and the Explorer have two very definitive aesthetics. We know what they look like. The Submariner styling is unique to the Submariner. The Explorer dial is unique to the Explorer. So adding both of these elements together to make one ultimate watch would confuse the general consumer. But then if we had to dig deeper and think about just why this formula wouldn't work, and this came to mind while bringing this idea together, it seems very jarring as a combination. Is it as effective with the Explorer dial compared to the Submariner dial? And I don't think it is. I think it is quite divided. The reason why this watch seemed to be produced in such small numbers back in the day when the Big Crown was released is because it was a prototype for the most part. They were experimenting with a few things. And this watch does seem to be more of an experiment than something grounded. When I posted this concept onto Instagram, many people commented saying that it looks like a Longines heritage diver. And that immediately brings the thought of just how symbolic the Submariner is and why this dial format is so effective, especially for those who don't know much about watches or about specific brands. But this was a great thought experiment, bringing these ideas together. It seems like a very effective approach one that takes and uses elements that we have seen from the family, combining them in such a way that produces a fairly realistic concept. Personally, when I look at this watch, I don't find it to be as enticing as a Submariner, surprisingly enough. I think the Submariner dial is unique to that piece and the Explorer dial is unique to itself. Combining them together seems very peculiar. And actually, there are other very well-known watches that have done this have used this formula all the way through, like the Blancpain 50 Fathoms, just thinking off the top of my head. Great suggestion though. Really enjoyed this exercise. And if you have any other thoughts of concepts that you would like to see come to life, comment them below and we can discuss them in more detail.